under the Chad Memorandum Order 15 series of 2017, imposed that students need to adhere to the role of engaging in self-directed learning and the sudden transition to online learning brought students to put emphasis and focus their learning process on being self-directed. Good day everyone, my name is Trixie Bancaya and here with me are Anjali Espan, Isagani Bahil, January Benitez, and April Cabansag. And today, we will be presenting a research study entitled Lived Experience of Nursing Students on Self-Directed Learning. Considering the fact that nursing is a demanding course that needs consistency in effort, we decided to choose and study this topic as we explore the various experiences of the participants that tackle their adaptation, implementation, and their perceived effect of self-directed learning on their academic performance. Objectives of the study The study aimed to explore the lived experience of nursing students on self-directed learning. As for the methods in terms of the research design, a qualitative type of research design was used in this study using a phenomenological approach. Two, focus on the experiences of the students through situational approach, generate concepts and experiences of the participants, and obtain understanding on the phenomenon being explored, and avoid any biases and previous notions about experiences, beliefs, and behaviors to a distinct circumstance. As for the study sample, participants of the study were the nursing students of the University of St. Losaldo College. The researchers interviewed eight nursing students with two students from each year level with an average grade of 90% and above in major nursing subjects. For the sampling technique, we utilize the non-probability purposive sampling. The participants were chosen based on our personal preferences. As for the instruments, the researchers made use of the interview guide that concentrates on a carefully selected group of participants interviewed about their lived experiences on self-directed learning. The interview guide questions is consisting of two sections. Part 1 is the profile needed data of level 1, 2, 3, and 4 nursing students, such as age, sex characteristics, learning preferences, and learning resources. Part 2 consists of the in-depth interview with approving and overarching questions about the lived experiences of nursing students on self-directed learning. For the results and discussion, the first theme that emerged was enhancement of independency and proactiveness in nursing education, as the main goal of nursing education is to form aspiring nurses that are proficient initiator of health promotion and disease prevention. These are the categories, engaging in self-paced learning, discipline and control as necessary for learning, and innovating teaching and learning strategies. The significant statements of the students emphasize that they are learning innovatively because they have the freedom on how they exercise their self-directedness during asynchronous learning. Along with this, they are gradually developing self-discipline and autonomy on their own learning process by being responsible and motivated. The second theme that emerged was clinical instructor's role as promoter of self-directed learning, as their goal is to motivate students to take accountability and ownership for their learning. These are the categories, providing convenient learning resources or materials, stimulating and assessing students' gained knowledge through giving of activities, affirming feedback as necessary for improvement, and inaccuracy of supplemental videos. The significant statements of the students emphasize that online learning resources provided by CIs are convenient. Assignments and group works also enhances their learning processes. CIs are also holding an open communication wherein feedbacks and suggestions are given to improve the work of the students. However, some tasks like GRD videos are inaccurate and difficult to comprehend. The students cannot practice it really well during their asynchronous time and emphasize that face-to-face -face GRD performance or practice with the CIs are much better since they can actualize every step with the CIs helping them in maximizing their performance skills. The third theme that emerged was comparison of self-directed learning in face-to-face -face classes and online classes. 
as the presence of COVID-19, students undergone unanticipated transformation to online classes. These are the categories, analyzing the quality of learning and comparing the intensity of workload. The significant statements of the students emphasize that they prefer face-to-face -face classes compared to online classes, since there is an information overload in learning online and they tend to procrastinate with activities given. According to them, self-discipline is difficult to achieve in self-directed learning in an online environment since there are also a lot of barriers along with it. They can somehow practice their skills in doing return demonstration asynchronously. However, they are having difficulty when there are uncertainties on how to perform it properly. The fourth theme that emerged was barriers in the essential elements of self-directed learning, as the barriers in learning carries adverse effects on the student's learning process. These are the categories, limitation in learning interaction, growing digital stress and burnout, and miscommunication and misconception. The significant statements of the students emphasize that despite of the benefits of self-directed learning, there is an ineffective and inaccurate communication system that if not properly addressed can lead to procrastination and demotivation. The students lost their productivity and motivation because of stress from the quality of education they are getting online and burnout from a lot of paperwork and tasks instead of having their actual duty on the hospital. This results to unproductive self-directed learning that can relay negative impact to their academic performance. With the outcomes of the study, the research team concluded that student nurses consider self-directed learning beneficial despite the difficulties they've experienced in their learning, as it allows them to improve their independence, management to schoolworks, and freedom in their pacing. It trained them to be lifelong learners a fundamental trait of being a nurse that will prepare them to face the ever-evolving demand in healthcare. This study will be beneficial in assessing the importance of self-directed learning to nursing education during the pandemic and that still can be utilized post-pandemic. As for the recommendation, we recommend to the College of Nursing Administrators to incorporate self-directed learning into every nursing course allowing students to engage and learn information that will be assessed through various activities. This could be done by allotting a period for students to independently scan through the provided learning materials that then be tested by the example of quizzes or recitation. For the College of Nursing faculty, consider students having different learning preferences and provide rich, visual, and interactive learning materials to compensate for the online self-directed learning. This action will help student nurses to be comfortable and confident in what they are learning. For the student nurses, identify and improve learning preferences and explore the use of learning application that can help in knowledge comprehension and retention. As students, they are well acquainted with digital world and may as well use innovative application that will guide and enrich their learning style. For the future researchers, fill the gap of the study such as considering the experiences of teachers, clinical instructors in facilitating self-directed learning to the students. That's the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.